Tremora, I always, we always had a um, caravan down here in Tremor. We used to come on holidays. I'm originally from Thai, and uh, we always came down here for holidays. I, I had all my aunts, everybody brought me, and I seemed to live down here for the summer. So um, when an opportunity arose to come to work, uh, needless to say, I was working in Dublin at the time and didn't really like it and a uh, little bit of a home bird and uh, I decided that I'd up sticks and come to Tremor in 1971. And yeah. You, you said the, caravan. Yeah. the caravan originally it used to be down in Riverstown there. The, they originally had them in the back of the houses but then that was all kind of banned. You had to have proper sewerage and that was going back in the good old days and uh, they moved into a proper caravan park, you know, across the way. Oh, I was, well, I was an only child, so I was boarded out with every aunt and every family that came and used the caravan. <laughs> I was sent down with them, and needless to say, I loved it. I loved Tremor. It was, it was a super place to live. So I went with the caravan, exactly. <laughs> Oh, I loved it, loved it. You know, I mean, Tremor was fabulous. I mean, we had very little in Tremor at that time. There was a couple of um, pipers had a, one or two little hurdy-gurdy things, or the swinging boats were the great attraction, you know, going back in my day, you know. But uh, I know it was lovely and, and we had, there was nothing there really. The lake wasn't there. There was only a path across the way that you could do a shortcut from the caravan site to, uh, up to the chip shop, it will say, which was a great attraction. McCoy's were originally the the main attraction there where the chip shop was concerned, you know. And the train. I would have remembered the train coming in from Waterford on the train. The only problem was when we came down by train from um, the station, you had to get a taxi to the other station to get the train out to Tremor, you know. But our first stop was the ship shop on the way. <laughs> Mm. Oh yes, you would have had, um, like, the, it was a long walk up to Mass every Sunday when you were here too as well, from Riverstown, it was a long trek up, and Cahill's, Mr. Cahill used to have the papers, and he had a, a shop where you would have um, clothes and everything, so you might be lucky to get a little outfit for yourself then, you know, going back, and uh, l &N was beside that then as well, you know, the old l &N. and and... Uh, you get a comic or you get a, um, a, a treat on your day on a Sunday when you were going up, you know. Or you would, uh, Gertie's, was, she, was, um, she was down, she had a, the old boathouse down near Riverstown. She used to do teas and things like that and you'd, um, you'd have uh, tea, you'd bring your pot to the beach and have your picnic on the beach every day, you know, your I boiling water. Tell us, what was Gertie's like? Gertie's was, uh, it was a big massive, um, it was an old boathouse, I think. They used to store, I don't know whether they did the lifeboats in it originally, and she just had wooden seating in there, and she used to do teas and sandwiches, and she had loads of little toys, you know, that used to break, maybe. You might have them for five minutes and they'd break. <laughs> but, and then you'd have to wait till the next, our drawing books, you know, so we were, everything was simple. All, all the people that yeah. were on the beach. They'd come up to her, our McCarthy's, you know, they were all there. There was uh, O'Neill's, where, you know where the, like the shape of the 50 cents piece is? That restaurant that's um, Moe's now, that was O'Neill, was his name, and he would be the same. He would have all the things that you need for the beach, the buckets and the spades and everything as well. And you could get a boil kettle. And you could get a boil kettle, yeah. yeah. What's the charge for a kettle? Oh, gosh, I can't remember that. It says only a few bob, like a few pence, really, you know. Our Mr. Stubbs used to do the bus tours out to um, Mr. Stubbs. He had the shoe shop and he would uh, do bus tours out to uh, Woodstown or Dunmore East or something. And you'd, you might get a trip for the day like out there. You know? <laughs> she were going back to the beach again, which was great fun on the bus, you know. But, uh, and then, what was your memory then of the, the locals? Did you meet any of the locals last week? Yeah, well, I would have played with, I would have played with um, uh, Kearns and, you know, Annie Flanagan's. They were the girls that were living in the houses that we would have had the caravan behind. 
and I would have known them then from for life really Butler you know all the familiar Tremor names there you know and uh, when I would come down I would play with them you know as a child you know and uh, it, was, it was great. Did you ever, were you, were you ever, did you come to Tremor then when you, you say you were a teenager? Yes I would and we had the Silver Slipper and we had the Atlantic Ballroom I do remember all those you know <laughs> dressed up to go to that, they were great, you know. I remember my aunt bringing me, actually, she loved to listen to the music, and you would have had the big bands in her time, and uh, I was only small, and she would smuggle me in, like, and we'd sit, there were seats at the back of the Atlantic that you could sit down, and you could uh, watch the bands and them dancing, you know. And needless to say, the same old ballroom was, was there when I was a teenager as well, you know. And you, Usher, like, uh, well, in her day now, I, I'm not sure, like, my memory, I mean, Dickie Rock was our band, and Big Tom, like, he would have a great attraction for any of those. Silver Slipper was mostly a disco style, you know, and um, I can't remember now what um, she would have watched, but sure, I was just happy to be kept up for a late night. <laughs> Yes, yes, you would, yeah. Well, I, I originally met my husband in the high B when the discos were really taken off there, you know. I used to go up on a Friday night for a disco there, so. And do you remember me? I do, oh, I do, I remember that night. I went with a friend of mine and her husband, and uh, I remember him coming over, and she said, he's a nice boy. <laughs> oh, sure, that was it. Was he a good dancer? Yeah. Uh, no comment. <laughs> well, disco didn't matter, did it? <laughs> he gets around, he gets around, you know. So, um, and then, what was it about you? I mean, obviously, you liked some more and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, just attraction, really, probably, you know. And sure, but that was 1972. We, we were married in 1976. Uh, and uh, we didn't waste time then. <laughs> and then you, did you move after you met him then? Or yeah, I had moved before. I was working inside for Tom Healy. If you remember Tom Healy, he was in the glass factory. He was a uh, personnel manager in there. And I worked, I came down and worked in a solicitor's office first. And then I worked for him. And uh, in, the in the glass factory, yeah, yeah. And you were in secretary? Sec secretary, yeah, yeah. So he was a, a real nice man, lovely man. And what was your memory of Glass Factory? Um, it was buzzing. It was buzzing, needless to say. There was a lot of... My biggest memory is probably the blowers singing. You know, and my office was on that side of the factory, and the blowers would sing, you know, because it was a monotonous job, blowing, really, you know. And uh, you'd, they'd have all the hits and they'd be singing away like there, you know. Uh, oh, God, what was in those times? Oh, my memory's failing me now. Um, oh, I can't, good, good yeah. Um, I presume there was, but they wouldn't. They'd be singing as a group, you know. They'd be just... Um, that was my biggest memory. And um, then if... Uh, I mean, there was a great comradeship then in the glass factory too as well. And they were taking on apprenticeships an awful lot, really, you know. It was buzzing, but um, unfortunately, times... That was out in, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, you had you had four different K's, like K1, K2, K3, and you had all the different sections, you know, and then you had the main office, and we were over in the personnel side where the, the personnel manager, he was dealing with all that kind of, you know, unions and different things, you know. And were you living in Tremor or what? I was living in Tremor, always lived in Tremor, yeah, yeah. And so where um, did you live down there in the first place? Originally when I lived, I lived down in Queen Street in a flat there, the top of Queen Street. And uh, then when we were thinking of getting married, we were able to buy a house in Love Lane there, which is just off the Dunwell, it's a lovely area. And uh, we're there since. Oh, and is that yeah. appropriate for a young couple to Well, we waited till we got married. I moved in first. <laughs> he was still at home with his mummy. <laughs> where did Love Lane come from? Uh, Love Lane was originally Hill Quarter Road. That was Hill Quarter Road was on the water rates we used to pay then, and um, 
I don't know. I'd say it was a very small lane and it was a bit of a, a courting area, you know, and uh, they, um, I don't know, I'd say it was Lover's Lane maybe and just got the name Love Lane because only just around the corner it's called Dunrail, Dunrail Drive, you know, so... Um, You've been there ever since. I've been there ever since, yeah. What was it, at that stage, what was the Coast Guard building there? The Coast Guard building was, the, the guards were there then, you know, so it was like the old, it was an old lady still living there. Um, she, she died in it, actually, and um, she was the last remaining tenant originally, you know. But they did have a tenancy, kind of, they had accommodation for um, families originally, but it was run down at that stage really, you know. And then, need to say, when they moved into their new building, it was derelict and it was abused really, you know, there was a lot of carry on in it, but um, I'm glad they did it up, they did it up lovely, you know. And just to go back to the olden times, the, do you remember the, the excitement of the other race week? No, because I, my family weren't really into the racing. Now my husband will tell you that he loved the racing. But, um, no, I do remember that week being very busy in Tremor. It was the busiest week of all, you know. And as we grew up, we would have gone to the races, like, you know, on the 15th of August to see the style, you know. But um, like that again, I, I'm not a real race goer, but my husband is all right. <laughs> he loves it. Just with the golf, how did you get into the golf? The golf, well, when I met Michael, Michael was, um, he was... He was very much into golf. He was playing off one at that stage, you know, and he got down to scratch. So he was, he was really into the golf. So it was a matter of, you know, joining him really, you know, and uh, so he sure he was showing me how to play. Yeah, and the Rooney here, he used to come out. It was an odd time, and he was he's a character here at the time, you know. He had a lot of sign language as Rooney. He'd be telling you to keep your shoulder right and do things like that, you know. And uh, Michael used to interpretate for me then. <laughs> He was telling me that I was doing right or wrong, you know. The Rooney, he was, uh, Rooney um, Butler was his name. He was a lovely golfer in his day himself, you know. There was a family of butlers here that are here. There's five generations of butlers here in this club. You know, there were. His, his, um, his, his brother, I think, would have been Christy Butler, who was a professional here, you know. And Andy Butler, you know, there was, the, well, as Andy was Rooney. There was a lot of them here, so they would have carried on the tradition of golf. And Chris and his family are very much into it as well, Paddy and the lot of them, you know. So there is kind of like that family tradition here? Yes, yes. You know, we're hoping now. We have six grandchildren, so we're hoping they'll all... Three of my kids are very much interested in golf as well. But we have a great course here. And we have a great comradeship in the club, you know, and a great social... You know, the women here, you never feel about, you come up here even on your own and you could sit and read the papers. I'd have no qualms as a woman coming in here. There's always somebody behind the bar that's friendly, a friendly face, you know. And uh, it's, it's a great, we have a great women's section as well, you know. Yeah, it, it was. It was in those days, I think it was, yeah. The war has it always been much more accessible? Uh, it, it was. Well, in my husband's time, it would have been um, on and off, you know. Um, you would have... You had to get somebody to pose you in a well, and you had to be kind of, you know, reasonably okay. Like, you know, there, were, there was a bit of a stigma in it. But that's all gone now, thanks to God, really, you know that uh, it's, it's open to anybody and everybody can play, you know. But there was, in those days, there was, you know, there was a bit of snobbery involved in it, yeah. It did, it did, yeah, it did, yeah, yeah, yeah. That you had to be kind of um, good, you know. <laughs> but, um, and has the it has, yeah, yeah, we have. We, we've had, um, in 92 now, we had um, a double here, which would have been, they won the Barton Sheelan Senior Cup, and that would have been a big All-Ireland, like, you know, and in um, 90, the last one was won there in, in 2001, was it? And, um, like, we have a good prestige. Robin Dawson now is our latest star here at, for the men, 
we have a lot of young girls coming up, but young girls find that, you know, by the time they're doing their leaving cert and they go to college, they lose a bit of interest for the boys keep it going a little bit longer, you know. But we have some great talent, you know, and hopefully they'll they'll shine, you know. There's some very young kids here that are are going to come on, I feel it. You know, young Butler now is one of them and and we have Susie Susie O'Brien who's her daughter. She's a professional. Not attached to the club now. We have Stephen that's attached to the club here. But um Susie Flanagan, she was originally from Dublin and she was an international player herself. She played for Ireland. And her daughter is, Clodagh is, great little golfer, you know. So there's a lot of them going to come up, hopefully, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then, I suppose looking back now, I mean, obviously you're, you might be up to now, it's a more woman now. Yeah, um, longer here than I was in a Thai, anyway, yeah. yeah. And like, I mean, I suppose, what is it that you really, looking back, that you come with? Really, 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 you know, yeah. Know, yeah, I think um, it's just such a lovely place to live. And it's a fabulous family place, you know, to rear your family, you know, that it's great. Okay, you have, as they call it, down around, and you uh, try and keep them a little bit away from that, and you do treats on the merry goes as such, but, um, but it is, it's great. You have everything, and then you're close to the city, and you have a good college inside in Waterford, you know, you have, um, and shops, and it's, it's a fabulous place to live. Wouldn't want to live anywhere else now. Oh, it was. Oh, I mean, my goodness, you know, like you've seen so many houses like coming on and McDonald's are building again, which is great for the economy as well, you know. And uh, I know it's good. It's improving all the time, you know. So you worried It is, yeah. I think we do need, you know, I think Waterford needs a bit more input from, from the government, really, you know. I think maybe to let the college be in a university would be a a big advantage as well, you know, and I do think, you know, it's it's improving. We are on the road to, you know, hopefully we get the cross the river now and everything will be fine that way, you know, because everything creates jobs, you know. But, um, yeah, great. Okay, you're welcome. You're welcome.